Hey everyone, Steph here from Old Guy Melts Plastic. Today is Saturday, January 27th, 2024. Uh, I am recording um, the first long format video of the year for me. Uh, sadly, since December 26th of last year, I've been uh, feeling a bit under the weather. I've had some respiratory illness. Uh, unconfirmed diagnosis, self-diagnosis is probably RSV based on the symptoms that I've been experiencing, which is a dry hacking cough that comes at the, a moment's notice. So I do apologize if I cough in your ears on this video. Um, I may try to mute it if that's the case or edit it out uh, post-processing. So um, today what I'd like to do is look at my Voron 2.4 um, and specifically run it through its paces to measure the uh, number of watts that it consumes. So I've purchased one of these devices that allows you to measure the uh, electrical consumption of your, your products. Um, so I've got the Voron 2.4 plugged into it. Right now the Voron is turned off. Um, so what I'm going to do is power it on, let it sit idle, and then I'll run it through its paces and see how that affects the wattage consumption. So turning it on now, And as it energizes the various electronics, you'll see that the watt consumption goes up. It'll take a little bit to get there. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do uh, from idle is set the hot end to heat to 150 Celsius. <coughs> Pardon me. 150 Celsius. And uh, we'll note that the um, hot end will initially get a surge of uh, power um, to heat it up initially, but as it reaches the target temperature, the power consumption will drop down. All right, so I am now going to set the target extruder temperature in clipper screen to 150. And we see that the consumption here jumps up. It was sitting uh, just under 16 watts, and we're just around 90, 91 watts here. Um, I do have, I believe it's a 70 or 80 watt heater cartridge um, on the hot end, so that makes sense. So it's uh, pulling just under 90 watts right now, and it's at 100 of 150, we're at 110, it's heating pretty quickly. 120 of 150. 130. 140. And you'll see that the consumption has dropped dramatically at this point. So we're at our 150 target range. <clears throat> and so it's just maintaining the heat on the nozzle and we're drawing, uh, you know, somewhere between 30 and 40 watts. Um, I'll see if it'll settle down. It's still kind of fluctuating a bit as it's trying to find that that median, but we're somewhere under 50 watts of power. Okay, so again, none of the motors are engaged, so neither the AB motors nor any of the four Z motors. Um, now on this printer, I do have two LDO 2804 motors that are powered at 48 volts on a TMC 5160 stepper drivers and um, they are running with a run current of 2.8 uh, amps um, so when I engage those obviously the consumption is going to go up and also the Z motors are Moon's motors I forget the exact model they're Moon's NEMA 17s um, and they are powered at 24 volts and I believe the configuration has them set to a run current of 0 0.8 amps each. So um, I'm now going to home all and we'll see how the consumption goes up. Now again, I'm maintaining that 150 Celsius hot end uh, temperature as I do this. So home all. And I am using a Cartographer 3D um, mm. um, hot end probe or uh, tool head probe. Um, so that brought us to 82.3. Uh, 
Um, and let's run through a QGL here to see how that changes things. So not a lot. Get up to about 104 watts. Um, and now we're going to home Z again. The next thing I'm going to do is run through a bed mesh using that cartographer 3D probe. So let's have a look here. I'm going to run bed mesh calibrate. Mm. So now we're engaging the AB motors pretty consistently um, at I'm doing running this bed mesh at a speed of 500. So um, the motors are moving pretty good. Tool heads moving relatively quickly. And we can see that we're pulling a shade over 110 watts, 112 watts, give or take. Uh, it's going to vary a little bit and fluctuate a little bit, but that's roughly where it's sitting. Um, so all that to say that, you know, without powering the bed, now the bed's a different story because the bed is pulling from mains power. Um, so it is drawing power through this uh, electrical plug, um, but it's doing so at a much higher wattage. So when I go to heat up the bed, I expect this consumption to go up dramatically while the bed is uh, heating up and maintaining temperature. Um, so we'll let the bed mesh calibrate complete and then I'll try heating up the bed to 110 C. And we're on the second pass coming back towards the front of the bed here with the bed mesh calibration. So that should be just about done in another minute or so. Almost done. Now for good measure, I'm going to home Z again. Okay, so now the motors are idle. <coughs> um, they're still consuming a holding uh, current or using the uh, the holding current to basically maintain power to the motors uh, so they're ready to go basically at a moment's notice but they're not in motion at the moment. Um, so the next thing to do is heat up the bed and let me just figure that out here in clipper screen. So again I'm setting the bed to 110 C and as the bed heater engages um, we see the watch, wattage consumption go up dramatically. Now, I believe I'm running uh, six, maybe 700 watt bed heater, so this number doesn't surprise me. Um, so it is pulling a lot more wattage as it's heating up the bed. Um, it does take a moment for the bed to get to temperature, so I'm gonna let it do that, and we'll see how it levels off um, once the bed has reached its target temperature. We should see that total amount drop a little bit, but it's probably, um, not going to get much lower than that. You can see the bed heat is at 65 of 110. We're still maintaining our hot end temperature at roughly 150 C. Uh, bed is now at 70C. Again, the motion system isn't engaged at this point. So what I'm going to do after this, um, once the bed is at temperature, I'm going to once again uh, do a home all 
quad GL and a bed mesh just to see what our peak usage is when most of the systems are engaged all at once. We're up to 80C on the bed mesh, or on the bed heat rather, sorry. takes a while to get to that uh, top heat. I think I might also be running my bed fans too fast. I have these four fans, including the one on the left and the right, and then the two inside the filter here, which is a Nevermore V6. Um, those fans might be running too fast and thereby cooling the bed um, from underneath. So I may need to adjust those fan speeds um, going forward. So I think if I'm not mistaken, they're running at 100% right now. taking a while for the bed to get up to temp. And again, that's probably due to the fans underneath that are cooling the bed surface from the bottom. Um, so let me adjust that actually. I think I can do that from in here. <coughs> yeah, those bed fans are running too high. Will it let me? There we go. Let's drop that to something more reasonable like 60. 20 actually, which I think will turn them right off and allow the bed to heat up. There we go. Yeah, the bed's almost at temp now. So let's see what happens to our wattage as the bed reaches temperature. I'm at 107, 108. One oh nine, and yeah, so let's go ahead and drop the or um, try to home. Again, doing a whole mall now. So we're at 775-ish, we'll call it 775, and I'm gonna engage the motors again. So homing all. And then again, a quad gantry level. GL done, and once again, the bed mesh while everything is under heat.
so there we have it. Um, as you can see, it peaked a little bit above 800 um, watts of consumption at one point there, 801.4. Um, so it goes up and down um, as things go, but um, your max draw is probably going to be somewhere in the range of 825 to 850 watts if you're using my configuration. Um, and without the bed heater, um, that consumption goes down something well below 200 watts uh, with all motors and the hot end heat engaged as well. So, and that's also running a Raspberry Pi at 5 volts and the Octopus Max uh, Easy MCU uh, powered at 24 volts. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Uh, electrical consumption on a Voron 2.4. Again, with my particular configuration, your, your results may vary. Um, this device uh, was about $25 Canadian on Amazon.ca. Um, not sure how accurate it is. I mean, you know, it might not be the, uh, the most accurate measuring device, but it gives me a ballpark range to kind of understand where my electrical consumption is on devices. So um, we'll see how this plays into my uh, electrical calculations going forward. I may, you may see this device on future videos as I measure other printers and things like that. Thanks for watching. Uh, I apologize for the long delay between new content. Like I said, I've been under the weather, uh, but I am starting to feel better, although the cough still hasn't left me 100% yet. Uh, but I do uh, endeavor to create more content on a regular basis going forward. Um, <clears throat> next projects for me are probably to um, finish setting up my Tridex, which I was almost there. I need to do, uh, basically connect the tool heads and basically run through the printer configuration tuning on the Tridex. It's my, my double-headed printer. Um, I do have an ERCF that I have yet to build, um, but I have the, the parts for it. Um, so I need to basically build an ERCF. And my thought, my goal is to mount the, RC, the ERCF, the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder, uh, and for those of you not aware of the ERCF, it is a multi-material unit. So it allows you to print with multiple types of plastic or multiple colors of plastic in a single print job. Uh, my ERCF will have nine, um, nine color capability or nine filament capability. So I'll be able to switch between you know nine different filaments. Uh, but if I mount it on the Tridex, which is two tool heads, I'll have a, another tool head with its own filament. So my thought was to have the primary color of any given print job mounted in tool head zero on the Tridex, and then nine complementary colors or accent colors mounted in tool head one through the ERCF. Um, and the reason for that is if the primary color uh, is mounted in tool head zero, um, there should be much less purge material of the primary color, so reduce wastage of the primary color. Uh, while still maintaining the multiple accent colors that I can get from the RCF. And it expands my total color capability from 9 to 10 that way, because there's the 1 on the tool head 0 and the 9 that are available on tool head 1. Um, so yeah, that's my thought process for that. Um, I haven't built the RCF yet, so I need to print the parts for it and build that out. Um, but once I do that, um, I'll be mounting it on the Tridex and see where that gets me. So. Uh, looking forward to getting that going. I have not yet had any printer that is uh, multi-material capable. Um, so this will be an interesting uh, leg of the journey for me in my 3D printing uh, adventure. So thanks again for watching. This is a longer video than I was expected, but I did want to give you some updates and uh, hopefully this content is useful. Uh, hope to see your likes and subscribes uh, going forward. Bye for now.